On BBC One, QED reports this week on the war of words down under. In Australia at the moment, there's no smoke without fire and no smoking without a fiery response. The industry's position, as you are aware, is that the, uh, the evidence, the scientific evidence that's being produced is not uh, conclusive in relation to a causal connection between smoking and human health. Tobacco companies tell lies. Are you saying that that link, as such, has not yet been established? Well, that's what the scientific facts say. Your now, interpretation of the scientific no, facts. No, that's what the scientific facts say, Christopher. Well, they'd need to claim that, because if ever they admit that fact, lawsuits will tumble down on them to the extent that forces them out of business of their own accord. And down under, on such heated medical issues, doctors take to the street. So it's QED against smokers, is it? Or QED following panorama on tobacco industry lobbying of a few weeks back? Well, no, it's not. These doctors believe they are acting in response to the influence of the tobacco industry. They are not anti-smoker, merely part of a campaign against persuading people to smoke. We feel that the only way to uh, counteract the effect of advertising is to take direct action. You know, the British Medical Association and our own medical associations have tried all other kinds of approaches and we feel they're ineffective. <laughs> We're breaching the law, but we're not breaching medical ethics. In fact, I believe it's a medical responsibility to take this kind of action. Defacing the cigarette billboards that are prominent in every Australian city, or refacing them, as these doctors put it, is one of their main objectives. Indeed, this group are part of an organisation named Bugger Up, or Billboard Utilising Graffitists Against Unhealthy Promotions. It's just a constant presence of cigarettes, I guess. It makes me angry. What makes you angry? Well, the fact that, that they're, they're advertising something which really is not good for you, um, and making such an incredible amount of money out of it. And I believe that it's very difficult for any anti-smoking campaign to get going because of the um, oh, pressure from the tobacco companies. And the tobacco companies in this country, as no doubt they have done in yours uh, for many years, have made profits out of the ill health of other people and it's about time that someone took them on. But that is a tall order for private citizens facing the resources of a cigarette promotion. At this one, there are free cigarettes and a sleek and expensive BMW on offer as a competition prize. Would you like to sample the top page 25? There you go, thank you. Have a lovely day. There are $1.61 in the shops with the new price rise. OK? Although billboard daubing is illegal, burlesque and mockery are not. But they are not exactly likely to be any the more welcomed by the tobacco companies either. Unexpectedly, this sort of amiable public confrontation is linked to initiatives 3,000 miles away in Perth, where Premier Burke is intent on changing the law on cigarette promotion. What's the link? Well, these protesters and their colleagues elsewhere are adept in the war of words. So it's time I took a back seat and let the story unfold. <laughs> They've got drugs in So you have to have permission to hand out leaflets of any kind, no matter who it is. I see. Uh, so I asked you to leave. Right, and uh, OK, well, uh, there's no problem if I don't hand out leaflets then. Yeah, as long as you don't uh, cause a front oh, to anybody. Oh, I wouldn't do that. that. Hmm? Is it all right to hand out cigarettes? Who are you? Promotion. Promotion for what? WDHO Wills. It's a good firm. Wills Kills. That's right, true enough. True enough? Mm-hmm. Good. Ask him up to damage the property. Win the competition, I I win a car and you lose your life. What do you do when you're not doing this? Smoke! Oh, yeah, that's why you're a skeleton. What's your name? Take the cigarette out of your mouth and take your mask off. I want to talk to you. What's your 
Do you like the smoke? <laughs> They're giving out cigarettes free here. Listen, mm -hmm. if you like, well, take you back and have a talk about it. Yeah, do you want to talk about it here or do you want to go back to the station? What, what exactly is the, the well, offence? Well, somebody right. pushed over the car and it's damaged for malicious injury. So we've been accused of malicious injury. Well, there's been a complaint made. The, the, car, the car was maliciously injured. What would, what would, happen, if I made a, what would happen if I made a complaint right. about them well, what if for malicious injury? They have done the same thing with their cigarettes to people yeah. as we're being accused of doing to the car. Yeah. Tell me this now, I can tell you specifically. See that man in black over there with the glasses? Mm -hmm. yeah. He maliciously injured several people today. I saw him do it. Okay, and there's some other. Anyone else want to lay in information here for malicious injury? Oh. It seems to be the go of the day. Come this on. is ridiculous. What, what are you for little, Doesn't this embarrass you when you go back to the police station and you've well, had to question people about dropping ash on a car? No, I'm not doesn't embarrassed. Embarrassed. <laughs> we, oh, get well, we get paid to do this. Well, we don't get paid to do this, unfortunately. I'd like to thank you all for coming here today. Those of you who are involved in the healing professions will have seen firsthand the misery of cigarette-related disease. And like me, you probably found yourself becoming hardened to the reality. One particular case sticks in my mind and I guess is what led me here. I was doing cardiac surgery at North Shore at the time. A 53 year old businessman came in after a massive coronary. Unfortunately, because of the extent of his disease, he didn't do well. And despite the best efforts of intensive care, he died in the small hours of the next morning. I went outside to tell his widow and his two teenage daughters. She looked me in the face and asked me why this had happened. Trying to be as kind as I could, I said, it's just one of those things that happen. And then I thought for a moment about what I'd said. I was forced to admit that I was just another apologist for the tobacco industry. He died because he had smoked. And by not admitting it, I was part of the conspiracy of silence upon which the tobacco industry relies. And I said, this has got to stop if I have to stop it myself. Well, the tobacco companies have been sent invitations to this meeting. I wonder if any of them have come and would like to identify themselves and perhaps speak to the meeting. Can you tell us why you're filming from behind a curtain? Uh, habit. Pardon? Habit. Habit. Can you tell us who is actually commissioning your know. filming? You don't I know. I do a lot of stuff for a friend of mine. Are you, can you say with assurance that uh, you're not here representing the tobacco industry? Yes. You can? Yes, I certainly. There are a lot of doctors here today. Does this mean the medical profession is really standing up and being counted on the issue? Well, there's ones who are here certainly are. I think uh, there's an immense amount of sympathy for us in the medical profession. I think yeah, that they recognise uh, what we are doing is, is right, although a lot of them are... Um, Oh, well, I guess reticent to do something like this. You're rep jeopardizing your career. Yeah. Most of the people in Bugger Up have worked for years through the so-called correct channels, and uh, it's literally being a bang your head against the wall exercise. Conservative governments aren't interested in acting with any force against the tobacco industry because they are dependent, in some sense, on revenue being brought in. And I think that uh, ordinary citizens who can make a statement are uh, making it in ways like this. Oh, now I'm getting the hang of this really quickly. The first time and it works like a charm. Does anyone else like to... Uh, we've almost filled up the whole board here. Anyone else want to try their hand? Oh, there's a bit more space. People have been streaming past here while this is going on. I've seen six police cars drive past. I think that uh, bugger up has now become a, a Robin Hood phenomenon in Australia. People recognise they're doing something very pro-social. The tobacco industry harp on endlessly about their so-called freedoms to be able to put this sort of message, these sort of lies in front of the public. The freedom that they understand is the freedom to do things, the freedom to corrupt the language by calling uh, carcinogenic products mild, by stinking cig uh, cigarette smoke fresh, the freedom to addict people to a cancer-producing product, 
the freedom to uh, just ride roughshod over the health of Australians, fill, put a bird, an economic burden on the uh, Australian healthcare system. I think the freedom I'd like to talk about is the freedom from uh, that sort of thing. Come to cancer country, where the flavor is. <laughs> yes, we're members of the Jet Set. And we all smoke the same brand of cigarettes. We fly here. We fly there. Well, we have to. We're trying to find a doctor who can cure lung cancer. <laughs> like a sponge. A sponge designed to soak up air. But some people use it to soak up smoke. If the average smoker could collect and wring out what goes into his lungs over a year, he'd find this much cancer producing tar. It's enough to make you sick. Very sick. What's prompted you to give up this time? Uh, well, there was a dreadful ad on television with a sponge that a whole bunch of muck came out of, and I think that was probably the trigger. A very good measure of the success of the advertising is the response rate, the number of phone calls that you get when the, when the advertisement runs. And we're keeping a, a weekly tally of the number of phone calls. Before the campaign started, they were getting about 300 phone calls a week. When Sponge went to air, that shot up to around 2,000, 2,500, and it was fairly consistent. And then after that, uh, the first week that the I've Had Enough commercial ran, the phone calls went to 12,000. They never told me when I started. Oh, it's okay. I was signing up for life. It took me 15 years to realize. Then it cut me like a knife. It smells. Given him so easy. Given up his tough. But all my friends have made it. Excuse me. I'm had enough. Had enough. I'm tired of being chained. It's time I pack it in. Had enough. This time I'll see it through. This time I'll if you've had enough, we can help you quit. Call the quit line now on 11640 or call into the new quit centre, Sydney Hospital, Macquarie Street, at the top of Martin Place. Hello folks, welcome to the quit centre. I'm Dr. Chris Clark. Now the rapid smoking technique and program which you've uh, enlisted to enter is one of the ways that we have found to be very successful in helping people to get over uh, the smoking habit. Now, a few words as to what it involves. It almost explains itself. You're going to smoke very rapidly. I'll be turning on a tape recorder here, and every six seconds you'll hear a thumping noise. On the noise, I'd like you to inhale very deeply and exhale, and be ready to go again six seconds later. Can you imagine that? <laughs> now, you each have those watches, right? Each time you puff, press in firmly, and it'll count the number of puffs you make. I'll start it. Now, I'd like you to light up.